Is housing prices the culprit for pessimism about the economy? That's what we're talking about on Today in Mortgages. Hey, what's up, Dream Records? Welcome back to the show. We're talking about what's real, what's hype, and what you should actually be paying attention to out there in the world of mortgage and real estate news. It's Today in Mortgage. I got my expert, Rich Jefferson, here to talk us through it. Rich, how you doing today? I'm great, Michael. How are you? Good, good. I am looking forward to the holidays. You? Merry Christmas, sir. Yeah, that's right. Hey, this might be our last episode of the year. So we're going to talk a little bit about where we're ending the year and what next year looks like through the lens of this, not so much article, but soundbite that we got from NPR's Marketplace podcast and show. And the title of that is exactly what I said at the top of the show is the cost of housing, the culprit for pessimism about the economy. And Rich, the reason I pulled this out is because in listening to this, they were saying some things that I agreed with and I wanted to talk to you about because as we've seen uh, inflation come down, the Fed has raised the rates to accomplish that. And it's come down in all those other areas like gasoline products, services even come down a little bit. But where's the one place that we haven't seen prices come down? Housing. Housing. And so it's interesting because the same thing that they're doing to push down inflation in all those other areas is pushing up inflation and housing costs. And so, Rich, tell me a little bit about that and, and how that affects the overall picture for inflation. Overall, anytime you bump interest rates astronomically based on where we were 18 months ago, you're going to see huge inflation in housing, right? Because the cost of owning a home gets more expensive with higher interest rates. All right, Michael, this is a good chance to talk about this charge. It's a really good example for this. You've got on one axis, you've got loan amount. On the other axis, you have interest rate. And it's based on a 30-year fixed mortgage, principal and interest payment only. If you look at a $400,000 loan, slide over to 6%, and you've got a payment of $2,398. $2,398. And if you add an interest point to that at 7%, your payment is $2,661. Yeah. So you see how inflation happens just with 1% interest rate. Yeah, Rich. And what's happened with that is that, you know, housing costs have gotten higher. So rents have obviously gotten higher because expenses are going up for landlords. And, they, you know, when that happens, everyone kind of loses on the housing cost front. And so, like we just talked about, the paradox of what the Fed's been doing has been pushing up rates so that inflation can come down. But at the same time, you know, a certain measure of inflation, housing, has had to go up as a result. And so what I'm excited about in looking at this is that we're kind of finally at the point where things have cooled off across the rest of the economy enough to where it sounds like, um, Rich, I mean, if anyone hasn't heard out there, they're living under a rock. But what did the Fed talk about last week and what are we looking forward to? It's a great opportunity to reference this chart again because it's a super good example we talked about it before a four hundred thousand dollar loan it, at seven percent interest rate is twenty six hundred sixty one dollars principal and interest on a 30-year fixed well if interest rates drop a full percent which they roughly did last week that same payment is roughly a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan at a payment of twenty six ninety seven so you know you just got more buying power by dropping the interest rate a full percent. Or you could just continue to look for a $400,000 home with the lower interest rate and save roughly $250 in your principal and interest payment. So yeah, no, good point, Rich. And the other side of that is that when it gets a little bit cheaper to purchase, uh, the competition on the rental side is going to have to come down as well. And so this seems like it's the, to me, I'm no expert, but it seems like the final kind of piece of the puzzle as we bring down those inflation numbers, the Fed's always trying to get down to 2%. Housing has made up a big piece of the kind of stubborn inflation that's stuck around. And so that's good news. I think all around, it's good news for us if those rates come down. And the reason we're talking about this, Rich, is because we're looking forward to not being in 2023 anymore. I know I'm looking forward to it. I hope you're looking forward to it. I know everyone else out there is looking forward to it. And I think 2024, uh, there's some good omens right here at the end of the year looking forward and uh, hope that's not just my optimism or the market's optimism. I hope it really is something where we're kind of turning the corner and getting into a new year at about the same time that we can kind of expect to get into a new type of market. So what do you think, Rich? Yeah, I, I agree 150% of what you just said. And you know, in my videos internally, you know, I'm super jacked. Just mm -hmm. the fact that we know the worst is over. Mm. 
You know what I mean? Because we went for so long, like, how long is this going to go? How, how bad is this going to get? And now we're at that tipping point where now the worst is over and, you know, the future looks a lot brighter in mortgage and real estate. So that's what I'm super excited for. And I'm super excited to get into the new year and start off 2024 strong. Definitely. Yeah. It's been the not knowing that's been the worst. And now we kind of know where we stand and we can kind of look forward to next year. It just kind of happens to be happening right here at the new year mark, which is really fun, exciting to look forward to 2024, start setting your goals for 2024. We have a way to do that. Like Rich just talked about his videos internally. He's super jacked about it. We're pushing our people to make their plans for next year because it is going to be a comeback year for sure. And so if you're interested in knowing more about that and learning about how you can be part of the best network and mortgages, reach out to us, click the grow link below and we'll talk to you all about what that looks like. Hey, we'd love to have you. Uh, we love having you guys as listeners too. And we appreciate you guys. Rich, before we sign off for the year, any final words you want to say on this? Hey, th Michael, this has been a fun project for us. And I do appreciate all the, the people that are listening or watching this on, on the social media platforms. But part of this is to share what the experience is like to work with network funding. So I don't want you to forget about network funding. Definitely download all of our free tools. Reach out to us, message us, let them know, let us know that you might be interested in joining our team and we'd be happy to reach out. Awesome. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rich. And thank you so much, everyone out there for watching and listening. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and we will see you guys in 2024. A brand new year, brand new market. We're excited. Mortgages are produced by Network Funding LP, which is an equal housing lender, NMLS 2297. The content of this program is meant to be a commentary on mortgage and real estate news, and any discussion of rates and or products should not be taken as an individual mortgage or home buying advice or pricing estimates. And any commentary on this show should not be considered a promise to make a loan. All applicants for a loan must qualify, and you should consult a professional regarding your individual loan scenarios for your financial situation. Visit our website at nflp.com licenses for all state licensing and other legal information.